Hey guys, it's Brazzle. Lately I've been getting some questions um, as to why I am not really collecting NES or SNES anymore, and why I've moved to PlayStation 2. Um, just a couple weeks ago, or really a couple months ago, I, I found a couple games for like five or six bucks at my local game store. Grumpy Bob's, and I picked them up because they were games I wanted to play, I wanted to try out. Um, and obviously these were PlayStation 2 games. And a couple weeks went by, I didn't really play them, but I kept seeing them on my shelf, and I kept thinking, man, I, I really ought to put those in. Well, I finally put one in, and that was uh, Lord of the Rings The Two Towers, which I had played back in the day, I think I, I had rented it back when it was new. And I really liked it then. I didn't. I never beat it, but uh, I played it. I played this through to completion. And <laughs> let the doggy jump out there. So I'd played Lord of the Rings: The Two Towers to completion, and I figured, you know, I kind of wanted to try to find some more cheap PlayStation Two games that were fun to play. Then the Missouri Game Con came, and I had a bunch of friends from out of town. Uh, Zach, who is known as the Schmutt Master. Uh, Derek, who is now part of this channel. His brother, and Hiatus, who is also known as Todd. Uh, they came in, we went to a couple game stores, and I picked up some cheap PS2 games. I think I spent like 30 bucks total. And then I spent another 30 bucks at the game convention itself, and I picked up a bunch of really cool games. And um, just kind of surprised at how low the prices were. So the first one I wanted to talk about, and this is Contra Shattered Soldier. And uh, Zach really wanted to try to play this over that weekend when the Missouri Game Con was happening. So I went ahead and picked this up and it was like seven bucks. And it's really freaking cool. It's hard. But there is the normal Konami code that you can use to get a bunch of extra lives. And, um, you know, if that were on a Super Nintendo, I mean, you know, Contra 3 The Alien Wars is like a $40, $50 game. That could easily be a $40 or $50 game on a, on a cartridge console or a console that's more popular to collect for. But here it was only like 7 bucks, so that's pretty cool. Uh, I also got Front Mission 4. Now, Front Mission 4, I, I have the first Front Mission. I was going to play it on a Retron 5 with a translation patch. For whatever reason, that didn't pan out, so I didn't end up doing that. Um, and uh, I hadn't played another Front Mission, but uh, I saw this for cheap, decided to pick it up, and man, this is a cool game, and I'm really looking forward to putting some time into it. Um, so, you, you know, you pilot a mech. It's a tactical role-playing game. So it plays a little like a Final Fantasy Tactics or an XCOM or, or one of those types of games and it, it's all just giant mechs and it's really freaking cool the graphics are really great the um i just really like the presentation of it and uh i'm really excited to put some more time into it i haven't really played this i hadn't played this before and so this was the first time i had popped it in and I, I thought it was really cool so i'm really looking forward to spending some more time with it now the next game i'm really excited about that's baldur's gate dark alliance uh, this game, I, I've played the original Baldur's Gate, and then this was more of a Diablo clone, so it's more of like a hack and slash RPG or an action RPG. You know, you go through a bunch of dungeons, you kill enemies, you gain levels, but it's all like just an action RPG type deal. So, you know, you're, you're attacking in real time, you can cast spells, you can change your armor and equipment. And I played this through all the way to completion recently because I got just so sucked into it. Uh, I hadn't played it before ever, um, and it was it was just really, really cool. One of my, I guess one of my new favorite games. But talking about Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance, I also picked up Champions of Norath, which is also done by Snowblind Studios. This was, uh, I guess, an, another game by the same developer published by a different um, a different company. But Champions of Norath is actually an EverQuest game. I have never played an EverQuest game before, but I but I started playing this after I beat Baldur's Gate just a couple days ago. And the the graphics are better, the the controls are better. Um, there's just there seems like there's a lot more to do. There's a lot more customization to your characters. 
but you can totally tell it was built on the same engine as Baldur's Gate. So I'm having a lot of fun with this now, and, and this is probably my uh, next game that I'm going to tackle and try to beat. This this game was... I bought this game at the convention for 15 bucks, but like all of the rest of the games that I'm bringing up here are less than $15 games. So again, PlayStation 2 is super cheap to buy for, and it's really, really cool. I'm really, really excited about it. All right, the next game is kind of another, like hack and slash or, or almost a beat-em-up and that's the marvel ultimate alliance it kind of plays in that same uh, overhead view as Baldur's gate and champions of norath but it's marvel characters and you know you start out with thor and spider-man captain america and wolverine and so far it's kind of neat um i'm gonna put some more time into it definitely because it's I, I, i'm kind of just in the mood for these kinds of games um i hadn't played it previously i know it was pretty popular back in the day uh, I, I remember a lot of people had talked about these games, and there's a bunch of X-Men games that came before it that were that played similarly. I just I had never gotten around to playing those, so uh, it's kind of nice to get to play this for the first time. I think this might have been this might have came out on the Xbox 360 and the PS3 as well, so this might be a later life cycle PS2 game. Regardless, it was pretty cheap and it's been pretty fun. Um, so I'll definitely put more time into this one as well. Back when I was in uh, high school and, and college, before I, uh, I guess, joined the army, I played a lot of, I played a lot of like racing simulation games like Gran Turismo 4, uh, Sega GT 2002, I think it was 2002, um, on the Xbox, and I really liked the racing simulation games. There was a period of time where I was really into cars. Not so much anymore, but um, I remember Auto Modelista or Modelista had come out and they were advertising for it it's pretty much the same type of deal it's like a, a racing sim but it's all cell shaded graphics and it looks really really cool and i remember whenever they were when they were uh, promoing this back in the day and i really wanted to play it but i never got around to it so when i saw this at the uh the game store you know a month or two ago for five bucks i was like oh yeah i'm gonna try it out finally and uh I've only played a little bit of it, but I can definitely see myself putting a lot of time into it because this is, you know, this is the kind of game that I really got into back in the day, and I really like the cell shaded graphics. Um, I think it'll be fun. I think it'll be a fun playthrough, so uh, definitely a recommended one. I don't think it got super good review scores back when it first came out. I think people were kind of just complaining that it wasn't as in-depth or as uh, robust as a game like Gran Turismo 4. Um, but uh, it was still really fun. I still really uh, enjoy it so far. So uh, we'll put some more time into this for sure. All right, and I already kind of talked about Lord of the Rings The Two Towers. Um, it's a hack and slash beat em up action game. It's fun. It, it does, near the end of the game, it, it gets kind of irritating. There's some, some irritating aspects to uh, some of the levels at the end, but definitely worth a playthrough, especially for the five bucks I picked this up for. Um, so you can play as, you know, three of the Fellowship, Aragorn, Gimli, and, and Legolas, and you get to level up throughout the game, and you get to add new abilities, new, uh, new weapon skills, and all kinds of fun stuff like that, and it, it's just a, it's a fun playthrough. Uh, like I said, it does get a little frustrating at the end, but I mean, I, I played through the whole thing without putting it down, so um, it was really cool and uh, definitely worth a look. But the sequel, Lord of the Rings Return of the King, was way better. Um, it's been way better. I, I haven't finished this one yet. I, I've played through about a quarter of it, maybe played through a bunch of levels. I think it's bigger. There's a lot more levels to, 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 to complete. There are more characters to play as. Like, you can play as Gandalf and Sam, um, which weren't in the original. I think Gandalf might have been unlockable in the or in the Two Towers. I don't know. I didn't get that far. I didn't unlock anything. I just played through the main story and beat it. But uh, this one plays a lot better. It's a lot smoother. The graphics look way better. It's definitely a much better game than the Two Towers. And uh, definitely recommend this one too. It's also like five to seven bucks. It's cheap. Lastly, we have Demon Stone, which is an action game that is set in the Forgotten Realms universe. And the Forgotten Realms universe being the Dungeons and Dragons, I guess, scenario or or setting that um, 
some really popular characters were were introduced and there's a lot of books written on it and R.A. Salvatore wrote the script to Demon Stone and he also wrote a bunch of books that I'm currently reading so I was really interested in trying this um, I remember when it came out you know years ago and I was interested in playing it then I just never picked it up I don't know why I'm kind of glad I didn't because now I get to experience it for the first time now uh, so that's kind of neat. Uh, it has the voices of Patrick Stewart and Michael Clark Duncan. So kind of kind of excited to play through this one. I've played through like the first chapter, and uh, or the first the first level really. And uh, so far so far it's really cool. The acting is actually pretty good. Um, the action itself is a lot like the Lord of the Rings games, uh, but it's just a uh, it feels a little more polished. Um, but uh, yeah, really cool game. So that's it. Those are the PS2 games I've picked up recently, and and I'm really excited about collecting for PS2 because those are a lot of really cool games, and they were all under 15 bucks. I mean, most of them were in the five to seven dollar range, and you can't beat that for good games. Um, sure, they're not as pretty as modern games, and they don't hold up quite as well as like a 16 bit game uh, with the pixel art and a 16 bit game would, but. I don't know, I'm still kind of nostalgic for that era. I just never really got to cover it a lot on my channel. Um, but moving forward, I think we'll be looking at a couple more 6th generation games because I played a lot of 6th generation games. Um, I also played a lot of PC at that time, so there's a lot of stuff I missed during the P PS2, GameCube, and Xbox era, and I'm really excited to kind of start exploring that. Um, but yeah, that's all I have. I appreciate you watching. Later.